A case of tick fever in a Jack Russell. A Be Kind to Pets veterinary educational video for vet students and pet owners. Sponsored by Topaya Vets. On 21st May 2014, this Jack Russell came in with fever. We suspected it to be tick fever. And here's the diagnosis. May 2014, Labor Day, 1.50pm. Okay, the dog has been given one bottle of tetrasaline. And uh, remember earlier on it was, it was white as snow. The gums were white as snow earlier on. But after one bottle of tetrasaline, vitamin K1 and uh, some dutalite amino acids, the gums are a bit better. Now you can see here, it's not as white as we had just now. That was when it first came in. I think you have seen the earlier video. Our earlier video was shown. Not so white. Now has, I have given, given him an anti tick fever injection as well. Now, how successful this treatment will be is up to the, to the time. So I, I won't know exactly. So in the meantime, we, we rehydrate the dog and give him the necessary amino acids, glucose and salt to to, uh, to replace any losses. Now blood transfusion will be the best but uh, due to the cost so we will wait and see whether uh, blood transfusion is uh, necessary. Or not. But from what I see, as you can see from here, I, I don't know whether the camera can show under the lighting. Definitely there's some pinkness, pinkness in the gums. Can it be shown on the on the video as compared to early on? So if we use the earlier video and now, which is only about uh, three hours ago, you can see the, the dramatic effect of the the color of the gums. Definitely it's not as, as, as a pure white or snow white as earlier on. So we will need to refer to the earlier video. So in the meantime, I'll give him iron, uh, amino acids, glucose, and uh, and other uh, solution of the salt. And we have to wait and see. He did vomit earlier on. Now, as to why he vomited, we, we don't know yet. That could be due to many factors. So we we'll wait for the blood test results. The next day, the dog has recovered, and we are handing this dog back to its owner. And the vet decided to give some final advice to the dog owner. 2nd May 2014, 12.20pm Okay, this Jack Russell had uh, white gums and white gums and uh, conjunctiva the temperature is 39.0 and uh, there's no fever there's no fever but uh, the smear shows that the smear shows that it's got this baby seal this from the lab and uh, this blood smear which I will give the donor shows the uh, of course you look under the microscope it shows the parasites in the red blood cells. So so the diagnosis is babesiosis uh, and also e canis. Uh, this one has got two two uh, types of uh, Infections in the red red blood cell. So there's an injection. There's an injection called Evitox, which is given, which is given uh, two days out yesterday and today. And this Evitox is the one which uh, will be against the uh, baby seal. Uh, so I will give another one. And uh, the Thai users want the dog e eating better, right? Yeah. Yesterday, yeah. given one. Huh? And uh, so, of course, the drips, the amino acid. Now we can see this is a very beautiful dog. You can see the gums are huh? still white, but there's a bit of pink. A bit of pink. Yesterday was very white. I think you saw it in your video yesterday. And uh, that's why I suspected it was tick fever. Although the owner says he never had one tick in his life. Huh? Never had one tick. But uh, sometimes the tick bites already drop off, and uh, so it, you only need one infected tick. You just need one infected tick, like dengue fever. You just need one mosquito, one infected mosquito, to cause this problem. You see, so so I'm surprised that uh, this dog never had tick in Singapore because 
all Singapore dogs have ticks, huh? especially when they go downstairs or they go somewhere. You can see it's very white, but not very white, there's some pink. Huh? So we'll continue to give the drip again one more time and then uh, the antibiotics, doxycycline and, uh, and this injection and uh, we'll wait and see if it takes time to recover. If it continues to be white then of course blood transfusion is, is needed. If not then uh, we will go from here day by day. But it's supposed to rest, cannot even walk much. Uh, just rest. You tap in your pain. Uh, the urine of what color? Um, brownish, right? Uh, you reddish brown. Okay, and then the tapina, normal. Mm. No? Don't have a. Mm. So this one will be may your hand feet it can hand feet, not force feet. Mm. And then uh, let him recover. Let be tight, no be tight because of this uh, uh, illness uh, affecting the red blood cells. So uh, it's very surprising because if you if you take the owner's history that they never had ticks in his life, then you won't do the the blood smear. And if you don't do the blood smear, then you won't get the diagnosis. Huh? So it's good that uh, you cannot take the owner's word for it. But sometimes the owners don't know you see, the tick bites. Huh? It doesn't mean that you might have a lot of ticks, then you get tick fever. Some dogs have thousands of ticks, but no tick fever. Some dogs have like this dog doesn't seem to have uh, one tick and yet he got this infection. Now tick fever doesn't mean that uh, the dog was having ticks recently, it can be one year ago. It can be some time ago, then when the dog's resistance is poor, the babesius comes in. So this is a very uh, unusual case because uh, last time I had one case, the same same uh, thing, uh, they say don't have ticks, but actually they have uh, tick fever, uh, parasites in the, in the red blood cells. So we will give the drip again, the amino acids, vitamins, and then I did give an eye injection with then the imidox, imidox injection, and then uh, the home can rest. Okay, that's it. On 22nd May 2014, the Jack Russell was brought for a follow-up visit and some checking. She not staying. Let's see the date to this date. May 21, 2014. The dog is about 5.25. 5 5 uh, yeah. Let's show the dog the picture of the dog on the wind machine. Show ready. Okay, come. Let's see. Uh, now let's check the gums. Now it should be oh, much pain. Uh. Mm. But not as pink, but still okay, I would say. See this side. As compared to this side, come. See this side. It's how long really? since the first day? Mm. Close to one month. Close to one month. Uh. Still not as pink as, but it's pink enough. Uh. Let me see, it came in also. First of May, uh. first of May, Labor is day. Today, what, what day is today? Today, 31st. Also oh, not long, uh, not long. Uh. So how many days are there? Three weeks, uh, three weeks, roughly about three weeks. Now let me check the glands. They were, they were enlarged at one time, they're still enlarged. Still painful, uh. there's pain there. How about this side? Still enlarged, uh. there are two enlarged glands here, submandibular. One of them is painful, uh. okay. I'm not going to check any more enlargement or not. I'm fit. Just relax, okay? The axillary, axillary link, no. Why? Whoa! Very painful. Okay, then go down here. Then this side, pop it here. And then enlarge glands, no. This one, no. Not really sad. And why not it below? Why not? Is it eating well? Yeah, eating well. 100%. Mm. Drinking? 
drinking wise, sometimes we quite hard to monitor him. But you, you can see from the urine. Uh, like back, back to normal. Yeah. Uh, back back to normal. Yeah. Quite painful on this feeling. And there will be some more infection inside the some mandibular. How is he now? Uh, six. Six. six years old. The teeth is not too, not too bad, but uh, we need dental scaling later. Eh? The eyes. There is some color there, some pink color as compared to that day. The tongue is also quite good. The capillary refill time, less than two seconds, the color comes back. Still a bit pale, but uh, not snow white in color. Check the heart come. Um, okay. Mm. Beating very fast is nervous. Huh? Mm. <laughs> Why so nervous? Come here, ma. always injection. Yeah. Mm. Very fast, yeah? about 200, 150, 200. How the stools are? Eh? Hmm? The stools? stools? Normal? What do you mean stools? So the oh. They pass the stools, are they normal? Yeah, normal. Normal? Mm. What does he eat now? Uh, beef? Then uh, with liver, liver, chicken uh, liver, chicken. There's I think we also managed to find some duck one, mm -hmm. and uh, we took mix together with egg. A then we can stay here. Yeah, a bit painful. How's the urine? Uh? Yeah, no, a bit painful. Why? Come see. Come go upside down. Come. Color is okay. No, has it peed already? Hmm? Pass water already? Oh, this on the shelf just came back and should be bringing. Mm -hmm. There's some pain in the blender though. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's some pain as well. Okay, there's some pain in his uh, liver notes as well. Other than that, it looks okay. So we take a blood test. Huh? Mm. And we want to make sure that the, the thick fever. The, mm -hmm. the fever. Check the smear again. Huh? Okay. Huh? I'm going to check the tip here. Okay, okay, relax. Yeah, okay. It's still on the Vibravet, right? The green tablet? Yes. How many times a day? Two times? One time. One time for how long? Uh, one, recently we just came and see your son. Yeah, correct. Uh, so you give like uh, half a tablet per day. Temperature is good, 38.7. Uh. This is normal. Up to 39.5. Uh. So it's temperature is normal, but there's some pain in the bladder area. And uh, was pain in the submandibular view nodes and quite swollen as well. So there may be some more bacteria inside. So we'll do the blood test and the and the smear again. Mm. But uh, he, he, he did recover the next two days right after injection, early on. Uh, wise, no, the still take a while. So long, long, how long did he recover his appetite? To 100% and how long? How long did it take to recover? I think about one week. One week? Mm. Yeah. And so, uh, you, you, want, you want to wait? Or you mm. want to come back again to collect? Uh, the drug? Come back again. Oh, you come back mm. again in the afternoon? Mm. Okay, yeah. Thanks. Okay, you can. So you go first, huh? Yeah. I just take a picture. Of. After the vet visit for the follow up, we decided to do some blood tests to just confirm whether the dog has recovered or not. 21st May 2014, 11.45am. This, uh, these are the blood tests used to check for babies here. 
the tick fever parasites or Alexia canis. No. We collect two, three tubes of the blood for one, two, three for the hematology and the biochemistry test. And then the other one, the other blood is meant for the smear, to make a blood smear. And in this smear, under the microscope, we will look for the Babesia and E. canis blood parasites. Yeah. So basically, these are the two uh, important tests to be done if you suspect the dog has anemia and uh, possible, possibly take fever. Without these two tests, you cannot come to a diagnosis or prescribe proper treatment. Today is May 22, 2014. We discussed the results of this tick fever in this Jack Russell male, 6 years old. Now this case is an unusual case in the sense that the owner wanted uh, another blood test about 3 weeks after treatment. Because most owners in Singapore, they, they kind of uh, want to save money so they don't uh, ask for a third, third blood test or a second blood test because uh, the dog has recovered. Now, the dog came in yesterday, so we took the blood and also did a, a blood smear. Now, the blood test results, as you can see, at the, at the start of the acute tick fever infection, the hemoglobin was 3.6. Now it's 14.2, which is back to the normal range after three weeks of, of uh, recovery. The red blood cell, was very low, so the mucus membrane was white. It was 1.4, the normal one should be 5.5 to 8.5. So it was really low, but now has recovered back to 5.5. And so the gums are pink, pink as you can see in the video. Now as far as the total white cell count is concerned, it wasn't very low at that time, but it was low. So that's how why I highlight it. Now the lowest in the low range is uh, 6, it was 6.7. Because this dog was infected by Alikia canis as well as Babesia gypsonii, Babesia canis. Now, Babesia goes attack the red blood cells, so that's uh, damaging the red blood cells, and that's why the red blood cell count went down to 1.4. Now, Alikia canis affects the white blood cells, so the white blood cell level has dropped. 6.7 in the lower range. Okay, so so the blood smear is a very important as uh, this gives us the idea of what infection and what causes the anemia. Now, you look at the platelets, the clotting responsible for clotting. Now, it, it went down to one, uh, 14 in at the beginning of infection, but after three weeks later, after treatment, it went up to 153, although it's low but uh, it's low in the sense that it's 200 to 500 in the range. The dog has uh, recovered quite much. Then the blood uh, smear test was taken also uh, yesterday and uh, it's negative for Babesia and Elichia. So overall the news is good for the owner. Now this, this, uh, this dog was treated with two days of imidocarb injection, two days. Then it's, uh, one day then the next day and also oral toxicycline. Now different vets treat differently. Some they, they give imidocarb uh, intramuscular in the sublumbar region. Uh, IM that means uh, one one day and then seven days later that's for bigger dogs. And uh, so then some books recommend different methods of timing so mine was uh, in the past two or three cases, recently I gave two days consecutively and uh, so in this case study, this shows that uh, the results are excellent in the sense that uh, after two days of injection, the dog was negative for Babesia and Elikia. So in the sense that uh, this is one of the rare cases where you can uh, see uh, see the results of the drug, the effectiveness of the drug. There are, there are other drugs as well, but uh, we are not talking about other drugs now. We look at this, uh, the main diseases transmitted by ticks to dogs.
Now the tick will bite the skin of the dog and transmit the the parasites from the saliva into the bloodstream. Now for this Jack Russell we have the two diseases, ehrlichiosis. Actually this this picture is not very good in the sense that when you look at the blood blood uh, results, it should be this type of picture where you see the, the microorganisms inside the white blood cells. And uh, this picture does show a dog emaciated. So it's not a good picture. But uh, you should have a picture of a blood cell, white blood cell infected with uh, the parasites. Now this picture, babesiosis, is good because this is what we actually see in the blood smear and you can see the babesia parasites inside the red blood cells. And uh, there are two types, babesia canis and babesia gypsuna in this dog. Now as far as the other two, uh, it, was, it was not found in the dog, anamplasmosis and the other diseases, these two were not found in this dog. In Singapore dogs mainly babesia and elicosis. So the, the way to prevent it is of course use spot on take insecticide every three to four weeks or make sure that the uh, dog is not infected by ticks. Not all dogs with ticks infestation will get tick fever but uh, once you see the dog not feeling well, not eating, lethargic and uh, the gums are pale, the vet should uh, bring, bring, bring the priority to diagnose that uh, the dog may be suffering from tick fever. Now in this case, in this Jack Russell case, the owner said the dog never had ticks before. So this, this tick fever can recur even several months after being bitten by a tick. So as far as the owner is concerned, the dog definitely did not have ticks in the past few months. And it, this is possible because the, the microorganism or the parasites, the blood-borne parasites, uh, resurface much later. And so the only signs in this jet also was pale gums and lethargy. Uh, so quickly do a blood smear and take blood test and uh, quickly give the imidox injection in this case and the response in my experience is very good especially when you treat, treat early now we look at the life cycle it takes so the adults are normally you see the private ones but then uh, this is the adult female that's why you see the big grey ones and they, they lay many eggs here as you can see as much as uh, as many as 3,000 eggs and after that the eggs goes in become larva which can see small small ones now normally it's, it's uh, microscopic under the hair I mean you can see under the microscope and then they, they change to nymphs nymphs are the bigger ones you see crawling on the floor this one you can see and this one you can see on the floor so this is the life cycle of the ticks and uh, the diseases they cause there, there are a few diseases they cause bacteria infection this will lead to an increase in total white cell count the other one is erythema migrans this is, looks like a rashes looks like a rashes caused by tick bites rashes rings like that, which you saw when I did some of the shavings of the dog with tick bites then the other one is uh, they may, be, they may become uh, chronic means long long standing and the dog may have lameness, joint arthritis, bacterial arthritis or even nervous symptom, nervous system disorders like uh, having fits or unable to walk normally. Then uh, the other zoonosis which affect human beings are rickettsiosis, the, they are very rare, tibula libonel. Then you have encephalitis, it's a brain infection, and then it's the renovocytic anaplasmosis, which usually come from cattle.